Hi guys, it's Katia here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today on why would I much rather have a fungus issue than bacterial issue on my plants. You know, my Crystal X Luxuriant seedlings, I've had one batch of these. Currently one more is in the making. The current ones have caused some sort of bacterial issue. I've somewhat tried to get rid of it, but given the circumstances of the lack of time and energy, they've kind of been a little bit neglected. So today we're gonna be talking about bacterial issues. We're gonna assess the situation on my Crystal X Luxuriant seedlings. Now, how it all started. I'm gonna chop two leaves and I'm gonna tell you the differences between fungal and bacterial infection and how can you recognize whether it's one or the other. I'm gonna mention some treatments from my personal experience. I'm a no pro, I'm still kind of winging it with a bacterial infection because I have no idea what I'm doing because I've never really dealt with anything on such level. Always wear gloves, especially with bacterial infections so you don't spread that shit elsewhere. We really want to quarantine them and you know make spread as little as possible. I can't quarantine them with current setup that I have. It hasn't jumped to any of the other plants so that's good. Okay so I have two leaves. In my left hand, your right hand, is a very infected leaf of Crystal X Luxuriance and this is one of the older leaves of my Poppy Scarlet. Firstly we're gonna cover the fungal issues because they are much more common than bacterial and I think majority of people will equal fungal issues to just a yellowing leaf which isn't true. In my experience fungal issues are much more friendly to your collection meaning that you can still continue raising your plants without much to do unless you get some really nasty fungal infection but most of the time it will look like this and it will very very slowly spread even if it does it's usually the older leaves and well most of the time I haven't been bothered to do anything about it. Fungal spores they travel via airflow they enjoy humidity the bacteria also travel by the same means you're much more likely to get bacteria from soil because that's a very rich environment for microorganisms to thrive I think I got it with soil but I don't know why they just brought it in crystal exclusion seedlings because I'm using the same soil everywhere but Fungal infections will usually show as yellow dots, yellow spots. On the underside of the leaf, you will kind of see a little bit of a scarring, kind of as um, it damaged the tissue and it usually will follow along on the edges of the leaf. The important note to differentiate fungal from bacterial is the fact that the rate that it spreads or grows is much, much slower. So you could have like an ongoing fungal infection for like two months before it gets really bad but with bacteria it's like oh, one week and you have it really bad <laughs> so this is the main taking point there are a lot of fungicides on the market that you can use basic one is even like hydrogen peroxide but in my experience once the fungus has penetrated the leaf you kind of cannot save that leaf anymore your best chance is to just cut it but with bacterial issue that's a little bit more iffy usually whenever you keep plants it's warm and humid which is a beautiful environment for bacteria to thrive in and once they set into the leaf they spread really fast again it depends which bacteria you get I don't know which bacteria it is from my experience there are a lot less bactericides available with bacteria you kind of have to be a little bit more careful what you choose because not everything or all the products are going to be effective on all of the bacteria and so what I've been doing is initially I started kind of the isolation technique so I've cut off all the leaves that had any visible signs of infection which has slowed it down but it didn't eliminate it I'm still dealing with infection leaves even after I've cleared all the visible infections. So what this tells us, the bacteria is still present somewhere on the plant or I hope not that it has penetrated the plant and it's basically cohabitating the plant and you know damaging it from the inside. So I'm really hoping that's not the case. So that did not help and then I've done a treatment with one of the things that I had. Basically it's the only thing that I had. I haven't gone to 
um, shops and got any specific uh, remedies for that. But I have a fun gown which is like a protective preventative foliar spray. I got this really really long time ago. I haven't used it much. Basically what it is, it's really simple. It's 3% food grade stabilized hydrogen peroxide. It also has I think it has colloidal silver with it. So basically hydrogen peroxide is your basic with plants. It's a strong disinfectant. Hydrogen peroxide is very reactive and it's not really stable. Whenever you use hydrogen peroxide, it will basically break down to water and hydrogen. Yes, we're having a basic chemistry lesson, but it is important. Oxygen is a very damaging radical to a lot of living things. It's really harmful for the bacteria that do not have the sufficient enzymes to break it down and it basically burns them open. It's also damaging to fungal spores. So what this does, it will neutralize the surface that you spray it on. This particular product says you don't need to dilute it, you can just spray it on the plants, which is what I did. And I'm not usually the one to use undiluted products. I tend to always dilute it at least first just to see how the plants react. And this time I didn't and it did bit me in the back. Plants kind of got a little bit burned. You're gonna be seeing bacterial damage and damage from these. I think it has somewhat helped in terms of slowing down the rate that it does. I've also preventatively sprayed some of my other plants that currently don't have it. I think what I would do the next time is either dilute it or you can use a full strength and then after, I don't know, one hour or something, you shower them. I found that it has some sticky residue that reflects light. Let me show you. So this is a really bad example. You can see this is still bacterial issue, but do you see that shimmer? That's like the residue. I think it's probably from the colloidal silver because hydrogen peroxide tends to not leave any marks. But this was the new leaf that got sprayed. Obviously, new leaves are super sensitive, but you can kind of see what it did. It's like, it's bad. Even the undersides have curled. Here is another example of a little bit more mature leaf. You can kind of see it's just like something munched on it, um, but you can clearly see that there's still a bacterial issue here. Um, so yeah. Also, I gotta show you something really special. Maybe I've hit a lottery, but um, I think this is a variegated seedling. You can see it has a streak of variegation running down. So if all the others die, I just want this one to survive and hopefully keep its variegation. So the plan for today is we are gonna be repotting all the seedlings. I will be washing the pots with soap and hot water. And I'm also gonna be repotting them into fresh soil, which might be contradictory, but it's the only seedlings that I've had problems. With. In the meantime, I will be also soaking the roots in the water to just try and get rid of everything that's flowing. So let's go because it's a lot of work to do. <laughs> Alright, so I've gathered a few and we're gonna start from here. All the soil that these plants have, I will dispose it. Here is one, you can see the situation. Some water here and kind of... I will be also cutting all the infected leaves just because I'm not playing around. I was initially thinking that I would cut all the leaves, but these plants are... They have been suffering for some time and I kind of want to ease the suffering. The color of this, oh my, so good, so good. So this here is another Luxurians hybrid. I think it's Luxurians crossed with crystal, so a reverse one because it's obviously way more bubbly than another Luxurians hybrid that I have is this Forgetti X Luxurians, which is gorgeous. I'm still waiting for the closed sinus. I think this is this is all we're getting currently. It's really nice, so nice. But I have to label this because I will I will mix them up. Now the next tip is we are gonna be potting this up in the clean pots. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is clean this table. So while the pots are soaking, I will be repotting these into the remaining pots that I have. Um, but for the specific two, I will be doing a different setup. Anyways, how you do this, this 
is what I've been using with my add on Sony. So firstly, you're gonna need some perlite and you put it on the bottom. So the perlite in the bottom will kind of act as reservoir for excessive water. The plant will wick as much water as it needs. And then for the soil, I already have a mix made here. Perlite, a little bit of potting soil, bark, and there's also some osmicote, but I will also add more osmicote additionally. Time to water them. Everyone right now is freshly repotted. I think I will be leaving these leaves as everything that I've done is already a big shock to them. Just, you know, repotting, washing the roots and then potting them up into a new soil. So I will go and kind of flush this with water. As you can see, I have a lot of stumps now, which is like more than a half. And then we're gonna put them back and hopefully they'll be fine. So this is it for this video. If you enjoyed and learned something new, please give it a like and hit the notification button and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.